Good afternoon. It's um, on the couch time and the friends that I bought with me today are missing completely. I've got this whole couch to myself. So, and it's just a COVID thing. Willie's at home, so he can't be on the couch with us at the moment. And um, there's, there's everyone else that we were thinking of is on their own couch in their own home because they're isolating. So this is gonna be a strange one. What we need you to do is we need you to send in some names of some people that you would like to see on the couch for next time. Um, if you know people that are available to um, either come into the office or we can even come to your couch if we have to. So send in some names of people that you wanna hear on the couch. But for today, it's just me, so I'll keep it a bit shorter. Max's meaningful minute on Monday was all about, he started talking about scars and how they're not the kind of thing that actually give us our identity, but we can look back and we can learn from them. The Bible story that he started talking about was in Exodus in the Israelites going through the Red Sea. Now, just this morning, I was at Lansdale School and a kid in grade three, um, they were asking all these hard questions and their teacher loves to get them to ask all the hard questions for me. And his question was really hard. He said, the 10 commandments that God gave us said that we should not kill people. And he said, but the Israelites went through the, the Red Sea and then once they were safe, the Egyptians went in and the waters closed and the Egyptians died. I don't know if you've got an answer for that, but it floored me completely. Because this kid in grade three, he's like a seven or eight year old. He had a really good question because there's a big picture in this world that we don't actually always understand. And that was the only answer I could give was that God sees a bigger picture and he was thinking that it was Moses that had killed these people. It was actually the power of God that actually put those walls of water back and that they came in. And so Max was talking about scars and things in our lives. And we've got a couple of questions for the couch today. And um, if anyone does have a good answer to that about what your perspective is, please send it to me. Um, Cause I'd love to tell you a kid in year three. Um, that there's sometimes there's just things that we don't fully grasp that one day we get to ask God when, when he comes to, to have us in heaven. We can, we can sit down on his couch. We're looking forward to that one hugely. But some questions for today were, when you look back on your life, can you see God's hand in a certain event? Now, the answer, I, I had to think about that for a while. And the answer is, yes, I can. And there are some very, very specific events that I could tell stories about where I actually believe without a shadow of a doubt that the person that came to help me was actually an angel. And there's, there's one or two stories like that. But the one that came to mind mainly was in my life, I was 25 years ago, I started becoming a pastor and I was a pastor for four years and then it just wasn't right. And so I, I stopped doing that. I resigned from that position and I became a tradesman. And in the years, which was about 16 or 17 years when I was a tradie installing curtains and blinds in people's houses, when I was doing that, I think that was a time in my life where God, when I look back, I can see that God was really, really working in my life. And he had his hand in the events of me having my own contracting business because one of the main reasons that I didn't really want to be a pastor, one of them was I didn't want to go and visit people. And I just didn't want to go into their home to see them. But when God had me in the trade, I was in four or five times every single day. I was in people's houses. And so in that process of doing that every day, five days a week, sometimes six days a week when it was November and December and I was busy, and it, I would go into these houses and in the process, I fell in love with people. And now one of my most favorite things in the universe to do is to not be on a couch by myself, but to be on someone else's couch in their home chatting with them. I just absolutely love it. And the, the, the God had his hand in that process because as I went into the different homes, I met so many people from so many different walks of life. And I feel like now that I can talk to any human about any topic at any moment with no notice at all, and I would really enjoy it. Whereas previously, when I was a pastor, when I was in my early 20s, I was thinking, I, I, did, I couldn't do that. I wasn't doing that. So in the, the, over the years, when I was a tradesman, where I know people that were looking from outside, externally looking into my life, thinking, oh, he's abandoned God, he's abandoned his mission as a, as a pastor, and all of that, there was judgments coming. But in the middle of all of that, God was slowly working on my heart, and he had his hand in it, so that I was getting to just love people again. 
So that's how I see that God has, has had a hand in my life um, in a very, very real way. And now if I'm in a room full of people that I know and somebody I don't know walks through the door, I'm just itching to go and talk to them. And I actually really enjoy it now, which is weird because I would have run away from that a long time ago. So God has definitely had his hand in changing that, but it's t- that one took a lot of years. Another question that we have is how do you stop your scars slash bad experiences from dictating your path forward? Now, I can actually sit here and tell you lots of stories about stories that have created some of my scars that I have. Um, And that's probably not going to be incredibly helpful. The idea is, the question is, how do you stop those bad experiences from dictating your path forward? And um, the, the very, very short version of the answer to that question is... You simply, in, at the end of, of no matter what kind of arguing you do or rationalizing that you want to do, you actually have to forgive, which is really hard to do. So I'll give you one short example. When I was at Avondale College, I used to play lots of basketball, always had, and I started thinking that I was actually quite good at basketball. I'd finally worked my way through C grade, through B grade, up to A grade, and it's just the amount of hours I spent playing basketball was ridiculous. Um, I'm too, very old for doing that now. Occasionally I, I get on the basketball court and I limp home because that's, I'm getting that to that age. But back then, I'd managed to get to A grade, but then there was a new president, and he was a friend of mine of the basketball club. And they came and asked him one day, he, they said, you want, we want you to be the president. And he wasn't really a presidential kind of guy, but he was someone that could be manipulated. And so he, he came to me one day when he was figuring out the A grade and the B grade and all the teams, and he said, we've created a new, a new grade called A Reserve, and we'd like you to play in A Reserve. But I had a chip on my shoulder about that, because in the, the previous um, competition the year before, I'd actually been the highest three-point shooter. I'm too short to be a, in mix it with the big guys, so I learned to shoot from out when I was young. I've even lost that now. But I used to be good at that, and I'd scored the most, and I, I said to him, why would I be in, B, in, in A reserve and not in A grade? And he said, the honest truth, he leveled with me. I really respect this guy for that. He leveled with me, and he said, you're not in A grade because you're not popular enough. There was another guy who was, in my opinion, relatively useless at basketball, but he was hugely popular, and they wanted to put me out so they could put him in. And so that created a scar, and that, that I didn't react very well to that at the time. I spat the chewy, and I said, no, I'm not playing at all. Forget it. When A Reserve was playing, I did have a part-time job, so there was my excuse, but it was purely an excuse. And it took me a long time to realise that this guy didn't have it out for me. I, I actually had to let that go. And it took me quite a while. And I saw that guy probably two or three years later, and he came up to me and he said, do you remember when I, I, I did this to you? And I'm like, I do remember, still. And um, he said, you know what, I did the wrong thing. And that actually, when he came to me, helped heal that scar a little bit, but I'd actually already let that one go. But it took me a few years. So the question about how do you stop your scars and bad experiences from dictating your path forward? My, my honest answer is that sometimes you've got to let it go and you've got to forgive. Because when you're forgiving someone, most of the time, that forgiveness actually benefits you more than it benefits them, which is an interesting, interesting take on, on forgiveness. It's, it's good for them as well, but it actually benefits your own life. So the question about how do you stop your scars, to, to let it go and to, and to forgive, and sometimes whatever your experiences are, that's going to be too hard. It's going to be too much to actually just to let it go. So if you take that to, my, my only other response to that is to, if we take it to God in prayer, as we, as we pray, it, it calms and it has peace on our lives, which is an amazing thing. And it leads me back to, to something I'll finish on. My, the, the first question about looking back on my life, an event that God's hand was in. It was the, the Sabbath morning that I finally stopped arguing with God when he, he wanted me to be a pastor again. I'd, I'd fought it and I'd fought it and I'd argued and I didn't want to. I enjoyed installing blinds and curtains. The money was good. The location in Bustleton was sensational and I loved it and I was arguing. And eventually the morning came and, and God led me to the Bible verse. It's my favorite one. I try not to talk about it too much, but I can't resist. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. 
it says that don't be anxious about anything. In everything, bring all of your all of your life to God, and He will grant you peace. It's peace that is so great we can't even understand it, and that helps with the scars, because when we have scars, we don't understand why somebody else would want to treat us that way. The guy that treated me that way, it was a, an insignificant thing. It was my basketball. Who cares? Someone might have treated you in a worse way. I don't know. But whatever your situation, wherever your scars come from in your life, no matter how deep your scars are, if you'll bring it to God, he will grant you peace. And that Sabbath morning when I was sitting in my, my, my little study at my house in Basildon and I, I read Philippians 4, 6 and 7 and I said, okay, God, you win. I'll be a pastor again which is not really encouraging. you think I would have been more excited about it. But from that moment on, that peace that that verse talks about, it kind of just washed over me. And I can't explain it any other way. And it's been with me ever since. And that was nearly five years ago. And God's peace, it doesn't mean that there hasn't been conflict. It doesn't mean that there hasn't been hard things. But God's peace is an amazing thing. And he promises to give it to you if we bring everything we have, scars and all, to God. So hopefully that's a helpful conversation today on the couch when you look back. And I'm sure when you look back in your life that if you have a close look, you can see where God has been and he's had his hand in your life. And I'm certain that he does have his hand in all of our lives right now as we speak. So enjoy um, your isolation if you're there. Enjoy your friends if you're able to get out and about. Send in some people's names that you want to see on this couch because I don't want to be here alone again. So enjoy, and we'll catch you next time. I'm going to say a real quick prayer. Dear Jesus, I want to bring everything in my life to you. And Lord, I just want you to grant me that peace. And I want you to grant everyone that's watching that peace in their lives that is beyond understanding, because there are some times that we just don't understand. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Catch you next time.